Hi folks, Adam Booth asked if we could make a Fusion 360 tutorial on making this um, CAD model and drawing of this rod extension. He sent up a paper drawing that he did and I think what he's trying to understand is does Fusion make sense to create a part in a drawing versus doing it by hand? Uh, is it faster? And obviously it's a lot better if you've got to update the drawing or email it out. Pretty cool looking parts. Um, they look beautiful on, on the machining work as usual for, for Adam. Um, so let's dive in folks. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. Before we start, I'm gonna make a quick note uh, at this drawing. It's two and a half inch round bar and the dimension from this left side to the shoulder here is seven and a quarter. It's kind of helpful to know that when we start. So in Fusion, first thing I always do, save your file, call it rod extension, and then create a component. We can talk more about it later, but you always want to be working in a component. Components are real world parts. So every time you have a discrete part in the real world, it should be a new component. Take for in the photos here, jog through. So this shaft is a component, the blue, um, you know, the blue nut would be a component, the blue plate would be a component, everything's individual components. So you create a component by right clicking right here, new component. We'll call it rod extension as well. I rename it by slow double clicking. Start our sketch with, by hitting L on your keyboard. And I'm gonna sketch it on this plane right here because that's in line. It'll let me sort of point it at the Z axis, the blue axis. If we did make this on our lathe, um, that's how I would wanna model it. You could change it later, so don't get too hung up on this. Turn my origin back on right here with this light bulb so I can see the blue line is pointed this way. Now the way the drawing is scanned in it's pointed that way. So to make it easier, I'll click this little to top right of your screen, this right arrow, and watch, it's gonna rotate the thing to the right. Kinda of helpful. I'll click on the first point, and I'll sketch down, over, down, over. Oops, I didn't go perfect there, but that's okay. Um, so I'm intentionally, or I actually didn't mean to create that incorrectly, but no big deal. We will use these constraints, and constraints are awesome. So I want this line right here to be horizontal. So I'll click this horizontal vertical constraint, click right here, and see how that locks it in horizontal, and you can see that little marker right there. These markers need to be done, they need to be a little more clearly labeled, but um, it's a good thing. I'm gonna click it on this one as well, because I want to make sure we didn't have a slight angle by accident there. The dimension between that shoulder and here is seven and a qu one quarter. So I'll click D, I'll hit D on my keyboard for dimension. Now when we click the first line, I'm gonna click it right here and see how the line toggles color. I don't want to click it you know, right here in the middle because that's actually capturing a point, the midpoint of the line. So I'll click right here and then I'll click right here, and that'll let me type in 7.25. We might kinda, perfect. The other end was four inches, so same thing. I actually still, see how my mouse cursor has the little dimension sign next to it? I'm still in dimension mode, so all I've gotta do is click on that line. I'm gonna pull the mouse down so that I'm placing the visible sign of the dimension down here. I'll hit four, enter. What else? I need to dimension the diameters. So we know this first area was two and a half. I'll click the top line, come down here, and I'll click this line, and I'll move over here to place this dimension, 2.5, again, divided by two, because we're working on half, we're working on the radius, basically. And the threaded section is 1.245. One point two four five divided by two. Okay, that's all I need here. We'll come back and add some more things in. So to what we do is we revolve this. It's really cool. 
So I'm going to go to Create, Revolve. And again, if you don't know what Fusion is asking you to do, let your mouse hover here in the white and it says select sketch profiles or planar faces to revolve. So I want to revolve this. Now I go up here and I pick the axis. So it says select, I make, click on that to make it blue. Let your mouse hover and it says select an axis. So I want to revolve it around this. Boom, click OK. So that's the... Um, basic rough shape of the part. And I went slow there, but folks, you can go, you can create that in 14 seconds when you get comfortable and proficient in fusion. So let's do, let's do this hole on the end. It's a one and a quarter by 12 thread, two, two inches deep in the, I guess it's three inches deep in the hole. So I'm gonna hit C for circle. I'm gonna click on this plane right here. And that'll let me create the circle and I'll type 1.25 divided by 2. So that's the 0.625. Oh, sorry, he said 1.168, so we'll change that. 1.168 divided by 2. And we'll extrude that down 3 inches. So hit Q for press pull. Click on this, and we will go negative 3. Yep, and that creates that hole. Now, to add the threads, really hard. Watch this. Create, thread, pick the face, which is going to be that sort of internal cylinder we just created. And I'm gonna pick my thread diameter as one and a quarter by 12. Let's make sure that was correct. One and a quarter by 12. And instead of it being full length, I'm just gonna have it be two two inches down, and we can choose modeled or unmodeled. Modeled will actually create, um, and it's, it's a lot more work for your CAD software, but it'll actually model the facets and faces of root and so forth of that thread. Um, and you can change that but down here by right clicking on that thread, edit feature, and say uncheck modeled. So you see they're kind of like grayed out there. The, the information is there. They're just, it's a much, if you do a lot of threads, you don't want to generally model them. And we don't use modeled threads to drive the CNC side of things. Okay. Next, we've got to do the, let's add, go back and let's add this 1 16th um, th uh, R thread. Relief. I will admit, I don't even know what that um, R means, I guess radius. I don't know the thickness, but I'll show you how we do it and Adam can tell me what, uh, teach me something on drawings here. So along here on the bottom, you've got your sort of timeline. So everything that we've done is events along that timeline. And the first thing that we did was our original sketch. So if I right click, so if I right click and say edit sketch, it pops me back to there. And if I change that, it'll let me view it in the same orientation. There we go. So we need to add a little relief here. I'm going to hit L for line and just sketch a box over here. Now, you notice I made it oops, way too big. That's fine. Make it big. It's easier. And now hit D for your dimension. And I think you said 1 16th. So, oops, I meant to click on the line. Gosh, that's frustrating. There we go. So 1 divided by 16, don't do the math in your head, you don't have to. 1 divided by 16. Um, that looks pretty small, but we can always, man, am I missing something obvious on that? Look at the part. Yeah, it looks like it's bigger, it looks like it's wider than that. Um, let's make it a little wider. Let's say 0.125. So see that little area that we've got? If I hit stop sketch up here, doesn't change anything. What we've got to do is we've got to change, remember we revolved it? That was the second thing on our timeline. So if I right click, see it doesn't let me edit that feature, drag a box, sometimes you got to deselect um, stuff. Now I can right click, edit feature, and if we X out of the profile and just repick it and click there, boom, you got it. So that's that thread relief. We'll add threads to the shaft. Those are, I think they were the same, one and a quarter by 12. Create, thread, boom, 
one quarter by 12, and this will be full length, and we'll leave a model, that's fine. If we want to put a chamfer on there, we could do create, excuse me, modify chamfer, and I'll say, you know, 0.02, that's nothing. Make those a little bit bigger. So I'll right click down here. See that, it's annoying. Deselect everything. Now you can right click, edit the feature, and we'll say 0.05. The last thing we got to do is add these flats for wrench. So those are 0.125 down from the OD. So check it out. We can create a, a couple, bunch of ways you can do this. I'm going to create a sketch on this plane right here. So I'm going to hit R for rectangle and click right here. So we're sort of looking straight down this thing. And if I drag a big rectangle right here, doesn't really matter what most of the dimensions are on it. I'm gonna hit D though in dimension from here to here. And we know that the original part was 2.5 divided by two. So that puts it right on the tangent and we want it one eighth of an inch in. So I'll double click on that and I'll just say minus 0.125. And that get, puts that right on the end. I'm gonna hit Q for press pull. And if I now pick, oops, that rectangle, I can say negative one, and see how it pushes that back, extrudes it negative one inch. So there's my wrench flat. Now, we could have created another sketch in a rectangle below, but if you take a look, we've got some good uh, geometry right here, like this plane that exists on our origin, right there. It's hard to see, but we can mirror this feature, really cool. So I'll go modify, it's create, I think. Create mirror. And what do I wanna mirror? This is one thing that I, I wanna emphasize, you gotta pay attention to. We're gonna pattern or mirror this feature. The feature are the thing, is the thing down here, it's that extrusion. So I'm gonna change this to pattern the features. And so I don't pick the flat. Uh, I feel like I gotta apologize for this because this is one of the things that isn't as intuitive. Um, I'm going to pick the thing right down here from the timeline. And then what's our mirror plane? Oops, I didn't mean to have anything selected. So I'll X out of that and I'll pick that plane. And boom, you can see, subtly see it's already there. Click OK. And there it is. And it's parametrically linked. So if we change the top one, the bottom one will change as well. So what else do we need to do here? I honestly think that was it. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to save the drawing side of this for next week. Uh, yeah, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share, comment below. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.